Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, TinyCon. Okay, I know it's 8.30 in the morning, but if I'm going to give it to you, you got to give it back. Good morning. Thank you. This is an engagement event. <laughs> uh, my name is David Nilsson, uh, and this is actually not my day job. I'm not a professional MC. I am here. Uh, last year, I got to participate as a speaker. This year, the team reached out and asked if I would be willing to be the MC, and I was honored uh, for the opportunity. Last year, I came. I learned a ton being part of the conference, and so I'm not only excited to welcome you to TinyCon 2017, but I'm excited to be part of your journey for the next 48 hours. Now, before we get going, uh, just a couple quick housekeeping items. Um, you'll see those up here. Should see those up there. There we go. So first of all, um, if you have any questions whatsoever, if you look around the room, you'll see people that are wearing orange. These are what we call pollsters. They are members of the Tiny Pulse team. They are here at your service. So if you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, feedback, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Secondly, uh, we're going to try our best to reduce the technological distractions. So I notice there's a lot of people that have your computers out, totally fine. I know you've got your cell phones, everybody's always carrying one. Ask just two things. First is, um, put your phones on silent uh, so we don't have a bunch of beeping and a bunch of uh, uh, rings throughout the presentations. And then also try to avoid murdering your keyboard. I don't know if you've ever been to one of these events, but I've sat next to people who are just typing ferociously on their keyboard and that can be equally distracting, so please, uh, be kind to the keyboard. On the back of your badges, I'm not wearing mine at the moment, but on the back of your badge is actually the uh, agenda for the event. If you have any questions about who's coming up, where you need to be, what time you need to be there, please reference that. And if you can't seem to figure that out, then please, again, go back to the people in orange. The pollsters are here to help. Uh, we are going to be taking lots of breaks. If you haven't already identified them, there are two sets of bathrooms. One are up the stairs and around the corner, and the others are over uh, in the back corner here to the left. Uh, just a secret, if you go that way, you need a code to get into the bathrooms, and I don't know what that is. So I'd recommend going that way if you need to go, okay? Um, Wi-Fi code. I know many of you are going to want to be connected throughout the, the event. You should have it on the sheet that's in front of you. The network and the Wi-Fi codes are up here on the screen as well. And then we would ask that you socialize your experience. We want to be a very socially active group, OK? The hashtag that we're going to use is just TinyCon. So Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, please post away. And then tomorrow, I'm going to be recognizing some of the funniest and coolest tweets, LinkedIn posts, Facebook posts, uh, that we can find using that hashtag. So please uh, do that with us. Also, there are feedback forms on your table. Last year, we took back a lot of uh, feedback from the members of the audience. Uh, we did make some changes to the format this year, so we ask for the feedback. You'll see it at the beginning, or excuse me, for this session, one in the afternoon, and again tomorrow. Please fill it out and then drop it off as you exit uh, the room. And then lastly, we are going to do a raffle before every single break. Two $100 Tango cards for the audience here. Now, I have every one of your names in this little fishbowl. Little technical difficulty though. Um, I'm six foot five, uh, six foot eight in heels, and I, uh, my hands are pretty big and they gave me a fishbowl that I can't <laughs> physically reach into. So I'm gonna be asking each of you uh, to help me uh, before each break uh, to pull our two tango card winners. Okay, how many of you were here last year? Okay, how many are here for the first time? That should have been everybody. Who's just not going to raise their hand no matter what I ask? <laughs> okay, good. Thank you for your honesty. I appreciate that. Um, I'll stay away from that corner. What I want to talk about, though, is how to maximize your time while you're here. Okay, so this very simple. The first is network your ass off. If you look around, there's about 200 people in this room, and every one of you are here because you want to learn how to create better engagement, improve your culture, uh, and increase the leaders within your organization, provide a better feedback loop, um, improve your online brand. You get 200 people that are all here for the same reasons that want to learn about the same things or are going to be going through the same experience. So take advantage of that. Now, I recognize that not everybody in here is going to be a natural networker. So to start with stepping out of our comfort zone, I want to go through an exercise. So can I get all of you to stand up? You can feel the nervous energy already. Okay. <laughs> Front row, can I ask you to turn around and face the back? Okay, now this is, now everybody that you just turned around is looking awkward. Okay, so now I want every other row to turn around. 
So the third row, the fifth row, uh, although the seventh row, I didn't think about that because I didn't count this, um, don't turn around. Instead, if you are in the back row, I want you to pair off starting with the two here, you two here, you two across the aisle, and then continue all the way down. If you find yourself alone, just find a twosome and join it. Okay, here's what I want you to do. When I say go, when I say go, what I would like you to do is reach across the aisle and simply say, hi, my name is David. I'm from Guidant Financial, and I live in Kirkland, Washington. Now, I also know there's a few smart asses in this room. Don't actually introduce yourself as David Nielsen from Guidant Financial in Kirkland, Washington. But do reach across, introduce yourself, and then when you're done, the person that received that introduction should say, nice to meet you. My name is X, I'm from Y Company, and I'm from this location, and then go ahead and sit down. Go. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and bring it down. Okay. Yeah, no kidding. Okay, so we, we've already identified we have a room of overachievers because I said just name, company, city, and that went on for like three minutes and you guys were still going. So you guys are naturals, perfect. So take advantage of that opportunity when we do breaks, lunch, dine around, introduce yourself, get to know each other, make some connections and even some friends along the way. The second thing is less is more. And I was trying to think of a good way that I could illustrate how to extract less as more, and it actually made me think of this commercial I saw probably 20 years ago, one of my favorite of all time, I think about it constantly, and it was a jack-in-the-box commercial. So here's Jack, he's walking around an expo hall, and he's going booth by booth by booth, and he stumbles across one booth, and there is a young kid in a hoodie sitting on a cardboard box. And Jack says, what do you do? Kid says, I'm a professional nugget taster. Jack says, huh, what do you charge? Kid says, 50000 per nugget. Jack was like, wow, do you have any customers? Kid said, all I need is one. <laughs> okay. So that's how I want you to think about this event. Oftentimes we feel lots of pressure to come into a, an event like this, take scrupulous notes, have hundreds of ideas, and then we get paralyzed walking away from it. So the only thing that I would ask is at the end of this event, go through your notes and pick one or two things that you can take back and put to work uh, that will have a tremendous impact on your community or your culture, okay, your companies. And then finally, uh, ask lots of questions. Uh, I can tell you that I was thinking about a good way to illustrate this. How many of you are Friends uh, fans? You watched the show growing up. Many of you. Okay, so you might know this. Um, one of my favorite episodes was when Phoebe, Ross, and Rachel are sitting at the dinner table and they're talking about uh, their favorite love songs. And Phoebe says, oh, mine is the one that Elton John wrote for that guy from Who's the Boss? You know, Hold Me Closer, Tony Danza. How many saw this episode? Okay, well, this, for me, this was a really funny episode because this is like real life for me. I can't tell you how many times I've sung a song in front of somebody and they're like, that is not what it says. Or I went to a karaoke bar and I'm reading the words and I'm like, holy cow, that's pretty cool. So if I could digress for one minute, I was trying to think of like some of the big mistakes that I've made uh, in a uh, sense I could remember. How many of you know Shania Twain? So Shania Twain in 1997, she came out with Come On Over. That was sort of her crossover from uh, country to pop. She had that song, You Don't Impress Me Much, you know? This is Shania Twain for those of you that don't know. There's a famous line, so the song is You Don't Impress Me Much. Oh, 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 okay, no, not a lot of Shania fans, I guess. Um, so in this, though, she says, I can't believe you kiss your carpet knife. Now you laugh, but listen, and you tell me if you hear it. See, I say that, and people, I still hear it when I hear the song. <laughs> Um, I'll give you another example. You guys all know Taylor Swift. She came out with 1989, and in the, the album comes out, and I'm listening to this for the first time on the radio, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. I swear she is bragging about going to Starbucks to pick up lovers. 
Now, if you follow anything social media or watch anything that follows celebrities, you'll know she has no problem finding new lovers. But in this, it literally sounds like she says, I've got a long list of Starbucks lovers. Again, I don't get it. They're paid millions of dollars a year to communicate with us, and half the time we don't actually know what they're saying. I'll give one last example, and then I'll stop with my uh, monologue. <laughs> Ariana Grande, who I think actually I would put up there as one of the best singers of all time. I think she is fantastic. I mean, I think of Whitney Houston and Celine Dion, even Christina Aguilera. I think she's uh, got equal talent. But the poor girl needs to learn to enunciate. <laughs> because the picture was perfect, by the way. When I listened to one last time, I swear that's what I heard, and you be the judge. I was a liar, I gave into the fire. I know I should have fought it, at least I'm being Okay, you didn't expect this for an HR conference, did you? <laughs> okay, so here's what I would say. The reason I went through this was um, partially because I think it's funny, uh, but secondly because um, what I don't want is people to leave here and go and try and influence change in their organization that would be the equivalent of what you just went through, right? You don't want to be don't want to be implementing unintended best practices, okay? Um, so we've made it actually really easy for you to engage with us. If you hear something from the stage that you don't understand or you'd like some more context around or you want them to explore a little bit more for you, we've made it super easy for you to engage. Now, I'll be directing a lot of the Q&A. We've got a couple of ghost, uh, or sorry, ghost, guest MCs. Uh, that was not to minimize the people that are going to be doing the Q&A later. Uh, but uh, we will have some mic runners, so if you're comfortable in this environment stepping up to a mic and asking a question and engaging directly with the speaker, we certainly would encourage that. But if you open up a browser quietly on your phone or your keyboard and you type in sli.do, slido, sli.do, and then all you do is enter in TinyCon, you'll go into an application where you can ask a question and that will go straight to the, uh, the device that I will be holding. I can ask the question on your behalf. Now as an audience, if you really like one of the questions that they're at, that, that's being asked, you can actually upvote it. So you can help me prioritize the questions as they're coming in as well. So please use Slido uh, while we go through that. So again, in terms of maximizing value, network your tush off, less is more when you leave here, and ask lots of questions. Okay, I'm excited to jump in. Uh, our first uh, presenter, is the founder and CEO of Tiny Pulse and also the visionary behind this event. Uh, David knew before he started Tiny Pulse had seen success with two other uh, venture-backed startups uh, and also got his MBA from Wharton. Uh, he's been recognized as a leader in this space. Uh, I remember he was recognized as a 40 under 40 by the Puget Sound Business Journal and recently at the uh, Burshin and Deloitte Impact Conference, Josh Burshin actually said that he, uh, Burshin, excuse me, uh, said that he was a true innovator in this space. Now, in full disclosure, I am a Tiny Pulse client, uh, but I'm also a close personal friend of David's. So I've known him for a very long time. And I remember years ago, well before all of this started, David would fantasize about his next, his next uh, project. He wanted to make sure that he could do something that was very impactful, that would change the way that people thought about people practices within organizations. At the time, he didn't know what that was going to be. And then I remember actually saying goodbye to him and his wife and their new baby as they were going off on what he calls a careercation. I know he'll talk about this uh, a little bit later. The careercation is where they traveled the world while he also simultaneously uh, interviewed entrepreneurs to really understand the pains that they had and thought about ways that he could solve some of those challenges or amplify some of the good things they're doing within their organization. And that led to where we are today. So, I'm super proud to be here, to be on the stage, to see how far that this project has come in just a very short period of time, and also excited to introduce my good friend and the founder of TinyCon, David New. <laughs> 